Maybe I'm a bit late to the party on this one, but I really wanted to take some time to organize my thoughts on Ready Player One before I jumped in and said something I'd regret, or wish I said more. Sometimes, writing reviews can be difficult, because you don't have much time to let the film make an impression, and you probably haven't seen it enough times to pick up on all the details and nuances. So, now that I've showered on it several times, because you have your best ideas in the shower, I'm ready to give my thoughts on the new Spielberg hit. The first portion will be spoiler free, and I'll give a clear warning before the spoilers come. Now with all that being said, on to the review. First, what I liked. Of course, it's hard not to get caught up in all the fun. It always gives you a kick to see a character you like on screen, or hear those 80s songs that play in Geico commercials. Well, that's how I know them. I'm not from that generation, but you still get what I mean. We all love seeing properties we're nostalgic about. There are also a couple of really great scenes that will keep you more than engaged. Ready Player One is filled with all these gags and references, none of which I'll spoil for you of course. Odds are, you'll be walking out of the theater with a grin stretching across your face. There's this cool part, and then there's this cool part, and uh, I wish I could talk more about it, but I can't. Another aspect I enjoyed is the world building. The movie takes place in pretty much a post-apocalyptic setting. The world is all drab and dreary, and people don't find much to enjoy out of the real world. Your common people live in these massive trailer parks with mobile homes stacked on top of one another. The sky is always gray, people are hopeless. This leaves the opening for a virtual world to be where everyone spends most of their time. Why live in the drab real world when you can do anything and be anything and see anything in the Oasis? Surprisingly enough, the Oasis is the one virtual reality game where not everyone walks around as Ugandan Knuckles, but wouldn't that have been hilarious to see? The Oasis itself? Actually, I'd give this thing far more credit but it's not such a creative, mind-blowing idea like Jurassic Park or Wonka's Factory. A virtual reality game where you can earn or lose money seems like something we can make now. I don't know why they had to wait until 2045 or something like that. Just take a virtual reality game, take the recent cryptocurrency hype, and mash them together. It's nothing crazy. But some of the locations we get to see throughout the film are really cool like the New York racetrack you see in the trailer, and other stuff I won't spoil. One more thing I certainly enjoyed was the message about nostalgia and how to treat our nostalgic properties. On one hand, you have the Oasis's co-founder and owner, James Halliday, played by Mark Rylance, who created this entire world for people to enjoy and experience the things they love. After dying, he planted a trail of clues to a key, or Easter egg, that grants the finder control of the Oasis. To do this, they have to go through Halliday's head and look at the art he loved. Halliday wants to share his beloved properties with the world, and he gives others the platform to do the same. On the other hand is the antagonist Nolan Sorrento, the owner of a large tech industry who wants control over the Oasis but for a very different reason. He's pretty much the EA of this world. He wants to sell different packs, and membership rewards, and ads, and all that nonsense. Sorrento wants to conquer people's nostalgia and resell it to them. Maybe I'm totally off, but Ready Player One seems to me like a commentary on the modern film industry, or entertainment in general. Constantly, businesses cash in on properties that we love, and try to resell them to us and make profit over our love for certain things. Star Wars, a big one, with two new series after the originals, and even a Han Solo movie. What the heck? Who asked for that nonsense? Indiana Jones is getting another installment. Yeah, because that went so well last time. Godzilla, King Kong, Superman, Batman, Alien, Independence Day, Disney movies, Jurassic Park, the list goes on. What they call movies, I call the rape of my childhood. The goal of the protagonists is to prevent Sorrento from making cash cows to milk out of the Oasis and everyone's favorite things. <laughs> However, I do recognize the irony in this. Ready Player One itself uses our nostalgia in order to sell movie tickets. I mean, did you see the trailer? It plays a remix of pure imagination while showing us stuff like King Kong the Iron Giant and showing us that directed by Steven Spielberg. What a hypocrite. And before you even knew what you had, you, you patented it, 
and packaged it and slapped it on a plastic lunchbox and now you're selling it. You want to sell it. Well, then there's also the lesson about reality and making sure that we invest in our actual reality, not putting all of our lives into something that doesn't even materialize. Not hating on video games, they're awesome, but in this world, people spend most of their lives in the Oasis while the real world crumbles around them. So we should work to better the real world, not the imaginary. I've pretty much gotten into the things I didn't like, so let's keep going. The exposition. There's a lot of it. I get that every story needs exposition to some degree, but that doesn't mean a 5 minute explanation to our faces at the beginning of the film. It felt like a college lecture. I was considering getting my notebook and taking notes. Audiences are smart, well, most of the time. You don't need to explain everything. We pick up on the subtle things, the little details that fill out the world. And it's funny that I'm getting into this after complimenting the world building. Also, this is a silly one, but TJ Miller is in this as some dude who deals under the table to Sorrento, and whenever he opens his mouth, I just hear Gene from the Emoji movie. Ugh. One last non-spoilery thing, I feel as though there isn't enough juxtaposition between the real world and the Oasis. The Oasis is supposed to be this epic and fun world to escape from the dull and dreary reality, but both seem grey and sad. Reality should be like this, but the Oasis should be more bright and colorful, if you know what I mean. Okay, so that's pretty much all I have to say without getting into spoilers. If you have not seen Ready Player One, I suggest watching it before finishing the video. I didn't love it, but I do give it a recommendation. It's pretty good. Go enjoy it. Now for spoilers. There were a few moments when I groaned in my seat at the theater. The first thing was Artemis, or Sam. Not that the character was bad, but just, just dumb sometimes. When she goes out with the protagonist Wade for the first time, he suggests meeting her in person, but she tells him off because she's not all that he thinks she is and she might be a disappointment. This makes sense because it could be anyone on the other side of the screen. Maybe a fat 40 year old man in his mom's basement. The film itself even brings this up, but when we finally see Sam, nope, she's a smoking young woman. Wow Wade, you got so lucky there. And her problem that she was all insecure about wasn't some disorder or anything. Nah, she just has a birthmark on her eye. Like, are you kidding? That's it? There's all this setup that she may not be everything she seems for nothing. And Sam's this perfect girl. The same thing happens with the rest of Wade's friends. His best friend H is a black woman in her 30s and seems perfectly cool anyways. I guess, all in all, Ready Player One doesn't take advantage of this concept it sets up. Well, one of the side characters turns out to be an 11 year old, and that was pretty funny, but it's no shock or anything, he's just a side character. Also, I felt the film dragged on a bit. Maybe the whole Shining part could have been cut down quite a bit. Even though it was a fun stop for the protagonists, it does go on a bit too long. Before I close out the video, I just gotta say, I freaked out when I saw Mechagodzilla. That was so epic. And Chucky's appearance was unexpected, but hilarious too. So those are my thoughts on the new Ready Player One. Yeah, they're still subject to change, but I'm glad I waited a bit before delivering this video. Overall, I found it to be a really enjoyable movie. Not great by any means, but I'd certainly watch it again. It has nice messages about defending nostalgia, while taking shots at these big corporations milking our childhoods, and about putting our time and energy into what is real and not devoting our entire lives to false realities. Yeah, it has its problems, and some things didn't jive with me, I cut out a few more nitpicks, but I still think that it is a pretty good movie. Obviously, not one of Spielberg's best, but not a disappointment, thankfully. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to please leave a like and subscribe. See you next week.